What is going on, everybody? The real Sharif M here, aka Mangana Steel, and we are going to talk about one of my favorite knife designers of all time. Uh, this guy is a custom knife maker, and he creates some of my absolute favorite favorite knives. Before we get into him, I'm going to just remind you guys to please like, comment, and subscribe. I am trying to grow the channel. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. And uh, really, I would appreciate you, you know, clicking the, the subscribe button by all means. Uh, just helps the channel grow and helps me continue to motivate me, honestly, to keep making knife content. Uh, so now let's get into this. Who is the designer of these knives? His name is Peter Carey. And Peter Carey is a phenomenal knife maker, honestly, and uh, does these uh, tactical, practical sort of knives is the best way I would describe them. Um, they're EDCable, but also like tactical capable uh, knives. And here I have a selection of his uh, production knives that he has done with Monterey Bay. And I'll split it up into two videos because we have two different models and just uh, four different finishes. <laughs> so we're going to start here with the VLD. And the next video to look forward to is coverage of the Turbo. So let's take the turbos out of here and focus on just the VLDs. Um, here we have two of them. The first one is in OD Green Micarta. Absolutely beautiful. Love the Micarta on this, man. It's this is one of my most carried, one of my most used knives uh, that isn't of my own design. And you can see some of the influence that Peter Carey has had on me. Um, definitely, uh, I've learned a lot by handling his knives in particular. This is the carbon fiber version. And this one is much more of a safe queen for me, honestly. Um, I just like having multiples and especially with one such as this, that's more of like a dressy kind of shape, uh, or dressy kind of finish. Uh, I, I just, you know, this one stays <laughs> in, in the, in the collection and doesn't get used as much. Now let's, let's focus on my user. Okay. So this is the VLD in all of its glory. Very, very nice, nice knife design. Uh, I'm not really sure how to classify the blade shape. And actually, believe it or not, uh, I actually busted my tip a little bit. So this is not the true, true profile. Um, it's even pointier in the original VLD. VLD, by the way, stands for very low drag. And that's really the best way for me to describe this knife. Um, it is just a pleasure. I, I don't know how else to really, like I said, describe this blade shape. It, it's not a drop point. It's... It's, yeah, it's just something different. And that's one of the first things that I appreciated when I saw this knife. Actually, just the blade shape was something different than what we're used to. Has a really nice, consistent primary bevel with this nice swedge here that allows the rather robust blade to get fairly thin towards the tip. And this thing, you know, if you've been following me and you've been listening to my personal theories about knives, what I use, this makes it really excellent for piercing into packaging, slicing through. Uh, 
It is a bit thicker and the the primary bevel is not super huge. So it does stay kind of thicker behind the edge. This is a real sort of like working hard use sort of knife. And the thing that I that also really attracted like me to this knife was the more traditional construction actually. So these are not steel liners. These are true 100% titanium liners. You have a stop pin right there across the back and you have, you know, just a titanium on steel lockup. Like this is old school folding knife, you know, at its finest in my opinion. Now, uh, some criticisms of that. That lockup did allow for a little bit of vertical blade play. And I did hear reports of some people having a bit of lock stick with this guy. Um, now, the vertical blade play is nothing serious, you know. We're talking like a quarter of a millimeter or something like that. It's really not you can kind of see it here. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me personally. Uh, I still hard use this quite a bit and you can see the lockup is pretty, pretty well resolved there. Um, so I don't have any fears about this knife failing. And even if it does, you've got the flipper tab that's going to run directly into your finger that's going to prevent any sort of issues. Um, but again, I don't have any concerns about that personally. Now, part of why I really also like this knife is it's thick. And I mean thick. This is well over half an inch, getting almost to like 0.6 inches. And it just fills my hand really nicely. I mean, I don't know if I can really kind of show you, like, look at, like, how much it just fills the hand for me and gives me this sort of reassuring feeling that I can power through material and just, it's comfortable as all get out. You have the traditional sort of carry pocket clip here, which I definitely can feel in the hand. I mean, this is a big knife and um, I can feel it, but it doesn't feel uh, uncomfortable, especially for extended periods of use. And my card of backspacer here, all of that good stuff, right? Again, traditional construction. One of the things though, that was a little bit of a surprise for me when I started using this and yeah, we started using it and uh, became part of my everyday sort of regular use knives was the sound. So let me see if I can capture this for you guys. It has such a distinctive sound and even the amount of pressure required for releasing the blade and overcoming the detent is a bit higher than most knives. And it's not just because it's a strong lock bar. One of the secrets to Carrie's designs actually are really, really short lock bars. So I don't know if you can see this like as clearly or appreciate it, but let me see if I have something that we can compare it to. Let's see, here we have my Pena Mula. And if you compare lock bar positions, see where the relief is here and the angle of that lock bar and then see where the relief is here on the Pena. And these two are pretty closely lined up as far as I can see through the camera. And what's interesting is they're not too dissimilar in size. Uh, the, the uh, whatchamacallit, the VLD being 
a bit of a bigger knife, but they're maybe about, I want to say, a half inch difference between the two in overall length. So that, I hope, I hope really conveys how short the lock bar is on a carry knife. And that really gives this very snappy action to it and gives this unique sound that just, ah, I'm so completely addicted to, honestly. Uh, I really love it. Now, the sound takes a slight bit of a different turn with the carbon fiber, and it's just the nature of the material, right? But have a listen. I'll do it up here. It's a little different, but it's still the same. And man, it just... I don't know. It, it's such an addictive quality to these knives that really endeared them to me quite a bit. Now, as far as the handle shape, this is perfection to me. I mean, really, like it's a nice sculpted handle. You have all the right places. The finger choil here is just perfectly sized to get your finger in. You have neutral ergonomics, which this is a tool, man. Like you don't see screwdrivers with all of these retarded bumps and curves to them, you know? Like it's a tool. I don't understand why more makers don't take cues from people like Peter Carey here and do something that is just genuinely comfortable in the hand regardless of what your hand size is. I can hand this to somebody with smaller hands than mine and they'll be able to use it comfortably. I can use, like give this to somebody with bigger hands than mine and they'll be able to use this knife comfortably. This is really the definition of well-resolved ergonomics and you can see here the knife nestles into that crease right right under my thumb and uses the the meat of my thumb to give me this absolutely reassuring grip and it's very comfortable boom in the reverse grip in the pinch grip you know, if you want to do a tip sort of like work here, saber grip doesn't matter. Every grip is absolutely useful because guess what? Neutral ergonomics. I'm going to beat this like a dead horse, but this is what Kerry does really well. He does a very neutral ergonomic knife that's not going to slip out of your hands very easily. Gives you maximum control of the edge at all times and he just does it so well there is some jimping up here but from my point of view this is aesthetic jimping it doesn't do anything to stop your hand from sliding or anything like that i don't really see it as functional uh to me functional jimping is like what you would find on the grazioso here um this sort of jimping here is genuinely functional. Like you get your thumb in it and it doesn't want to move. Or if you really want to be aggressive about it, you can, you know, use the style of jimping that uh, Arcane or um, Chavez has adopted with these large, I want to call them almost lugs that just nice, sharp dig into your hand. All right, but let's continue talking about the carry. Overall, like I think this is a wonderful knife and there are some subtleties to it that may not come through as well on camera, but you do have a bit of chamfering here. You can kind of see it if you look at the end here of the knife, right about here. You can see there's some chamfering there's a little bit more chamfering up here on the micarta version. 
And actually, if you look at the carbon fiber version, it looks or appears to be more sort of like rounded. Um, and that may just be the nature of the two materials, but yeah, this thing is just, oh, buttery smooth. I would actually argue the carbon fiber is a bit more comfortable in the hand than the micarta is even. And that's part of why I kind of keep it as a safe queen or, you know, like a little bit more uh, dressy kind of situation. It's just, it's a big knife. It's an intimidating knife. It makes a large noise. <laughs> um, so it's not always the one that I'm going to take with uh, nice company, but um, it is still one of my favorites. Now, another another sort of interesting feature about this knife, and it's been hotly debated, um, is the pocket clip. So if you look at how the clip is done here, you have a very nice sort of initial ramp, which does make this knife very easy to get into your pocket. Uh, however, look at how sharp it comes to a point. And this thing definitely, if you're wearing nicer clothes, uh, that is not necessarily the nicest pocket clip to use. Uh, it definitely does tend to really grip and will wear down your pocket edge uh, if you are carrying this with nice dressier pants. Um, and it, the same is true with the carbon fiber version. You can see the same here. Uh, some people have said it makes it a bit more difficult to remove from the pocket. Um, yeah, I suppose so. For me, you know, I'm not a big crazy person about deep pocket carry clips. So if you look here, this about this much is going to be sticking out of your pocket. For me, that's enough to get a good grip and to extract it out of the pocket. But I do admit wholeheartedly that that does require a, quite a bit more force than, say, like something like this, you know? Uh, this is very balanced sort of shape to the pocket clip or even a, like mine on the Grazioso. See, this is not, it's somewhat similar, but there's a bit of give in the, uh, in the the material or the, th the you can see how thin the pocket clip is on the Grazioso, whereas when you compare it to this guy, it appears thin, but it's actually fairly thick, and it does require quite a bit of force. And particularly with pocket clips, we're talking the difference of like half of a millimeter or less. And that actually does make a difference to the retention. But also, if you look at the thickness, that plays a factor as well. Um, so as far as the design is concerned, that that is one point of contention for these. But occasionally, you can find these on the secondary market if you like them, uh, or if you like these from what I've shown you. Uh, and from my perspective, they're absolutely worth it. This is one of my all-time favorite knives. And and that's why I have two. Because I want to freely use the hell out of this guy. And not have to worry about it ever. And generally, I, I do. <laughs> I really do. I... I have used this, I've used the tip for like digging out stuff in the garden. I use it to open like bags of soil, uh, packages, you name it. And uh, this guy has been a, a very good user. The edge is perfect for just slicing through paracord and ranger bands and things like that. And again, 
never had any issues with it. So take a look. There is his logo. Let me see if we can get the camera to focus in on it. There you go. Carry for Peter Carey knives or Peter Carey blades. And this has been the VLD, guys.